Hey everybody, welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna talk about how to design a patch antenna. Now, this is something that I brought up briefly in one of the videos in our NRF 52 series, and I promised you guys a video on patch antennas, and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. One of the things that I will present is the patch antenna design equations, and we'll go through the process for how to use them. So, let's get started. So patch antennas are very easy to design on a PCB. They're probably one of the simplest antennas you'll design and they have a very simple structure. So if we just take a look at the side view of a PCB, let's just say that this is our substrate. Here on the bottom layer, we have a ground plane and then our patch antenna is gonna be located just above a ground plane. We have a thickness here, we'll call it H for our dielectric. And then we have two dimensions here that we're using for the patch antenna. First dimension is of course the width. And then if you look at this from the top view, we will have our antenna. We generally have a feed line coming in and then we'll have a length right here. Your job as a designer is to basically determine what the width and length are for your patch antenna given a value for H and then given a value for DK for your PCB laminate material. So generally when you're designing a patch antenna, these are the two things that you get to choose. You get to choose them because you get to design the stack up. Then of course you'll have an operating frequency, we'll call it F sub zero. F sub zero is the center frequency or the carrier frequency that you wanna broadcast at using this antenna. Given these two parameters and your operating frequency, your job is now to figure out what is the width and what is the length of this patch antenna. So after you figure out the width and the length, you'll then need to determine the input impedance looking into the antenna at this interface. So there will be an input impedance. And then using that input impedance, you can figure out an impedance matching method. So generally, the input impedance is gonna be somewhere on the order from 200 to 300 ohms when DK is on the order of four and then H tends to be much smaller than the width or the length. Given these values, you can then determine an impedance matching method. Some of the methods that are being used for impedance matching with a patch antenna include like a quarter wavelength method. So quarter wavelength is something that we talked about in an earlier video. There's also an inset where you can bring this into the patch antenna just a bit. You could also use a LC network. So you could use an LC network and have the output of that LC network match to the input impedance of this patch antenna. So first, let's outline a process for going through this calculation. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine W. So W is the width. That's the first thing that we're gonna determine. Then we're gonna use W to determine the length. And then using W and L, we can then get number three, the input impedance. So this is the order in which we need to do everything in order to calculate everything we need to know for our patch antenna. So let's get started with the width. So the width follows a very simple equation. So the width is going to be equal to speed of light divided by two times our frequency of operation. And then we have a term involving the dielectric constant down here. So we have dk plus one divided by two all underneath this square root. So this sets the width of the patch antenna to be approximately a half wavelength corresponding to F sub zero. So if you look at the structure here for a patch antenna, where this is the width. Here we're taking the speed of light divided by the frequency, and then we're dividing that further by two. So that sets approximately a half wavelength here for the electric field below the patch antenna and confined inside of the PCB material. What happens here inside of the patch antenna is that this is actually radiating along the edge. So here we have an open region beneath the patch and above the ground plane. Field lines are actually going to protrude out from the edge and that's what allows radiation around the patch antenna. So next we can use this and we can use H, which was the thickness of our substrate, 
to calculate the length of the patch antenna. But there's actually one other quantity that we need first. That other quantity that we need first is the DK effective value. So this being a patch antenna on the surface layer of a PCB, there's going to be some fringing fields around the patch antenna, and that will define an effective DK value, which we can then use to then calculate the length. So the effective DK value should be very familiar if you're familiar with any of the microstrip impedance equations. It's going to be equal to DK plus one over two. And then we add in this other factor, DK minus one over two, multiplied by one over square root of one plus 12 times H over W. Here, we need to get W first because then we're plugging it into this equation. That gives us DK effective. Now we can use this to get the length. So now our formula for the length depends on, of course, the speed of light and the frequency, and then the DK effective value as we calculated before. But there's this other term that we subtract from this fraction. And then this other term depends on the width and the thickness of the dielectric. So taking those two factors together, we have to subtract this other term in order to account for the fringing fields. So give me just a moment, I'll write out this entire equation. So this is a very long equation for the length. Now this equation and these other equations are all found in a blog that is linked in the description. You can go there and check it out and you'll find all of these equations detailed in a much more compact format. But this is a very long equation for, of course, the length. But you can see here it relies on all of these other parameters that we had to calculate first. But this gives you everything that you need to calculate the width and then the DK effective and then the length. So now that we have our length and our width and our DK effective, we can get the input impedance into our patch antenna. So for the input impedance, you actually only need the length and the width. You don't need the DK effective value. Now, the input impedance is actually given by the ratio of the electric and the magnetic fields looking into the edge of the patch antenna. There is a compact equation, which I'm gonna show you. Technically, if you were operating in a higher order mode, which I'll explain in just a moment, you could calculate the input impedance in that case as well. But for our purposes, we only need to worry about the fundamental mode for just a moment. And the input impedance is equal to 90 multiplied by this fraction and then multiplied by this ratio squared. This is your formula for the input impedance looking into the edge of your patch antenna. Using this and your desired input impedance matching method, you could then design your feed line coming into the patch antenna. If we were gonna use a quarter wave transformer, the impedance of this quarter wave transformer is gonna just be given by the square root of Z in multiplied by whatever our target impedance is, usually it's going to be 50 ohms. If you were connecting to a coax cable somewhere back along the feed line, then this might be 70 ohms or 75 ohms, just depends on what your coax is, but generally it's gonna be 50 ohms. So this would be the impedance of your quarter wavelength line. If you're doing the quarter wavelength matching method, your impedance transformer and your patch antenna are essentially gonna look like this. You'll have your patch antenna here, and then you'll have your 50 ohm line here, and then you need to figure out what's the width of this quarter wavelength matching line. Here, you should notice that Z in, as I mentioned before, is somewhere between about two and 300. So that means once you multiply all this out and take the square root, you're gonna have Z sub Q be larger than this 50 ohm value that you are targeting for impedance matching. So that means your feed line is gonna look something like this, where you have a thin line here, and this is your quarter wavelength impedance transformer located right here in this thin section of transmission line. Now we can also calculate a bandwidth for the patch antenna. Now the bandwidth is going to be essentially equal to the range of frequencies that it can broadcast at with minimal deviation from the value that you calculate for the carrier frequency. Now the bandwidth is also given by a relatively simple equation. The bandwidth, we'll call it BW, is just 3.77 times the frequency. And then we have this same fraction just inverted. And then we have a factor that relates to 
the dimensions of our patch antenna. And then here we have L and then lambda is down here in the denominator. So this lambda is the wavelength in free space. So remember that this is the wavelength in free space. That means you need to take your operating frequency and then use that with the speed of light to calculate whatever this lambda is going to be after the patch antenna broadcasts in the free space. So this completes all of the design equations that you would need to design a patch antenna on a PCB. So we have all of those equations listed. And like I said earlier, you can find all these equations on a blog that's linked in the description. Now these equations assume that you're operating in the lowest order mode for your patch antenna. So your patch antenna is an open radiator. It has a set of cavity resonances associated with it. And those resonances solve the wave equation inside the region bounded by the patch and the ground plane. Now, technically, there's an infinite set of frequencies at which a given patch antenna can operate. And you can calculate all of those higher order frequencies with a very simple relation that you could derive from the wave equation. That simple relation is what I'm going to put on the board right now. These higher order frequencies are indexed by three numbers. They are associated with the length, width, and height of the patch antenna. So we have a set of three numbers. We'll call them I, J, and K. And these are all integers. All of the higher order modes can be indexed to one set of I, J, and K. Now each frequency we can index by I, J, and K is just going to be equal to C divided by two square root of DK effective. And then we have a very large square root here with a number of factors that depend on the geometry. So we have I over L squared, and then we add in our J term, which is associated with the width squared. And then we have our K term associated with the thickness of the dielectric, all of that taken to a square root. This allows you to calculate all of the frequencies at which a patch antenna can operate, any frequency, as long as it solves this equation with i, j, and k being integers. So in the blog that I've linked in the description, there is actually a calculator application that you can use to calculate the dimensions of your patch antenna. So make sure to check that out. And if you're not the type of person to start plugging numbers into equations, that's okay. You can go ahead and access that calculator for free. I encourage you to check it out and have fun. Now, the last thing to discuss with our patch intended design is the directivity or the direction at which it radiates. So if I have a patch antenna and you can see here it's located above ground and I have my dielectric, where is this patch antenna going to radiate? Well, the patch antenna essentially irradiates into a large lobe like this above the ground plane. So the ground plane essentially blocks the patch antenna from radiating back in this direction. It will only radiate in this direction. So if you look at a graph of directivity versus this angle, we plot the directivity as a function of theta. What you'll find is the graph looks something kind of like this with a maximum right here at zero degrees. The maximum emission is going to be straight perpendicular coming off of the patch antenna in this direction. So this concludes our overview of how to design a patch antenna in a PCB. Now make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. You'll be able to keep up to date with all of our tutorials and updates. And of course, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, everybody. Yeah.